Well, joining us now to talk more about the Fed, the markets, and the president's agenda and what it all means for you is David Kelly. He's chief global strategist at J.P. Morgan Fund. So, David, why did the market see as such a positive the withdrawal of Larry Summers as a possible Fed chief? Well, it's all about uncertainty. The stock market hates uncertainty. And uh, there were two forms of uncertainty in the summer's nomination. First of all, uh, he was quite right. It would have been a drawn-out confirmation battle, and it might well have got stalled in committee. So if you remove that, that removes some uncertainty. And also, even though Larry Summers is actually better known than Janet Yellen, Janet Yellen's views on monetary policy are extremely clear. They're very well laid out. We know exactly what we get if we have a Janet Yellen success, a succession to, to Ben Bernanke. So removing uncertainty about those two issues, I think, is really what, what's behind the market move today. And it was a strong market move, as we said. We finished off the highs. But, David, how long do you think that kind of performance can last, given the fact that we've had some mixed economic data lately? Well, I... You know, there's a difference between strengthening and tightening. Uh, and I think it's very important to understand this about the economy. Overall, this is not a very strong economy, but the labor market is tightening. Uh, that's absolutely clear. And so, uh, you know, I, I think the, the, the economy doesn't look as if it's growing very fast, but it's growing fast enough to push the unemployment rate down. Um, and I think that does mean that we will gradually see a removal of Fed easing, uh, of, of QE, and also, you know, higher interest rates. And, and, you know, I think the economy keeps on growing. So I think the market will move up, but, I, but it, it could get a lot bumpier. You know, I, I know John Harwood was talking about the, the budget battles we've got ahead of us. And I think that it could be a little bumpy over the next few months. But generally, the, the direction I still think is up. Do you expect to hear the Federal Reserve uh, on Wednesday, when Mr. Bernanke has his press conference, say that they're going to ratchet back the bond buying? And if so, by how much per month? And uh, what effect, if any, do you think it's going to have on the markets, or have the markets already discounted it? I think they will. And I think the market might be a little disappointed by that. Certainly foreign markets may think that the, the uh, the withdrawal of Summers' nomination somehow means some sort of tilt away from this, this tapering. But the Federal Reserve has to get rid of this program. The economy is improving. Over the next nine months, we expect them to phase it out. Uh, you know, maybe it's $10, $10 billion of you know, less purchases going forward. Maybe that's what they announced this Wednesday. But either way, over the next nine, nine months, they're going to go from $85 billion of purchases to basically zero. And that, I think, will have a significant impact in, in pushing long-term interest rates up even further than they've already moved up. That was my, gonna be my next question. You have ESP, David. How much further do you think interest rates will move near term if, indeed, the Fed moves as you laid out? Well, I think over the next year, as we get, as we remove this program, and as individual investors also rotate a little bit away from fixed income, I think you could see 10-year Treasury yields move up to three and a half, maybe even a three and a half to four percent range. I don't think they'll go over four. I think the Federal Reserve will make it clear that they don't want to see rates move that high, and they could, you know, halt this tapering of bond purchases if if rates do move too, too high. So I, I think, you know, moving from close to to three percent to somewhere in the three and a half maybe 35 to 4% range over the next years. That's what, what we pretty much expect. David, I don't mean to push you too hard here, but what is your favorite global stock market right now for the next year? Um, well, I, you got to look at it in terms of, uh, of gains uh, and also volatility. The, you know, I think the U.S. stock market should be relatively steady in its increase. Uh, overall, I think European stock markets though, have got the most room to make up here. Uh, Europe has been very depressed. There are signs that Europe is turning the corner here. And if you reduce global risks, if Europe does begin to turn the corner, you know, it's usually those, those mm -hmm. markets which have been beaten down a lot, where there's a lot of pessimism. That's usually where you get the biggest gains. So it could be a lot, a lot more volatile overseas, but I think the biggest gains probably will come in overseas markets. David, I knew I could count on you. David Kelly, always great to see you. Chief Global Strategist at J.P. Morgan Fund.